Hey guys, it's been more than a week since I did one of these because this week has been like really uh, busy because I was just like working like full time and just working from morning all the way till evening and by the time and I got stuck in traffic for like an hour because that's like when everybody goes home and by the time I get home uh, like uh, eat dinner and just like clean up a little bit and by the time I'm done it's like 8 uh, 8 or 9 uh, p.m. and I'm already worn out I mean uh, if I had the proper uh, if I like set up the proper lighting and everything then I had the perfect chance and perfect time uh, to like maybe react to one of these but I'm already worn out and uh, I had to like get up early to go to work the next day but now it's the weekend so if we can finally do one of these so welcome back guys to another episode of Sith history if you're new to the channel welcome so this one is called what was the galaxy like when the Republic lost all control so in the last like few videos I remember like even with the titles and just like the thumbnails and like all the content that was being produced the Republic has been on a huge uh, losing streak in the beginning uh, when I watched, uh, watched like the first five or six episodes it was kind of like an up and down situation there was like some battles the Sith were like winning but then there was always like a, a betrayal or a civil war that happened that like caused the whole thing to just like collapse but it looks like this one it's finally about like when the Sith literally had control of everything but of course it wasn't going to be a permanent uh, status so we're going to see what happens so without anything else let's get into it in our last video on the history of the Sith, we told of the end of the old Sith, the fall of the true Sith Empire, and the gradual disintegration of the Sith as an ideology. For over a thousand years after the time of Dark Darth Desolus, it seemed that the Sith were gone for good, and the Republic had peace. But the Sith weren't totally extinct. Darth Desolus was indeed the last Dark Lord of the Sith for a millennium and a half, but scattered Sith cults endured hidden across the Outer Rim, and at least one lineage of Sith Lords remained, tracing its roots back to the Sith Triumvirates. They would see a resurgence 2,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, when a new Dark Lord of the Sith arose, one who would change the Sith and galactic history forever. Oh, I wonder who that's going to be. Attention, Sergeant on deck! In 2000 BBY, an Umbaran Jedi Master named Phanius left the Order. He had long been a controversial figure among the Jedi. He was intelligent and charismatic, earning him the respect of many of his peers, but he held solipsistic views that the Jedi Council condemned as heterodox, arguing that he was the only person he could be sure really existed. The ideological difference with the Council was what drove him to leave the Jedi, who Phanius had come to resent for rejecting his views. He became determined to make them all pay for what he saw as their ignorance of his enlightened beliefs, and so he sought out the remnants of the Sith. Guided by a stolen oh. Sith holocron, Phanius fell to the dark side and set about infiltrating and seizing control of the various Sith cults scattered across the galaxy, uniting them under a single banner in a bid to form a new Sith Empire. Once he had gathered all the remnants of the Sith, he claimed the ancient title of Dark Lord of the Sith taking the name Darth Ruin and revealing himself to the galaxy. Darth Former Ruin. admirers yeah. of his left the Jedi Order and joined Ruin as Sith. Fifty at first, oh, wow. and then many more. So began the Fourth Great Schism, which itself was only the opening salvo of the new Sith Wars. Darth Ruin and his followers became the new Sith, and they carved out their own empire in the Outer Rim, taking advantage of gridlock in the Senate, seized territory from the paralyzed Republic. These new Sith were much less organized than their forebears had been, composed of a dizzying array of cults under the loose command of Darth Ruin, less an organized empire than a vast confederation of megalomaniacs. Ruin himself was the most megalomaniacal of all. He had come to embrace the idea that he was the only being in the universe who actually existed, and as a result, treated everyone else as garbage. Illusions meant solely to help him amass power. Oh, this ideology wow. led Ruin to throw away the lives of his followers en masse in battles with the Republic and the Jedi, and understandably, Ruin's disciples weren't terribly happy with that. Just a few years into his reign as Dark Lord of the Sith, a group of Darth Ruin's students murdered him, prematurely ending his campaign to rule the galaxy. They then Already? immediately turned on each other, 
fracturing Ruin's empire into a jumbled mess of Sith kingdoms which were at odds with each other as much as the Jedi. But though Ruin was dead and the new Sith were in chaos, the Sith survived and their war with the galaxy continued for centuries to come. For over 200 years after the death of Darth so Ruin, it's the, same story. the new Sith were constantly at odds with each other over who would become the new Dark Lord. The Republic was in an even worse state due to the slow implosion of its overloaded bureaucratic structures, and without its support, the Jedi struggled to stop the advance of the new Sith, despite their disunity. The Sith conquered a swath of territory in the northeast outer rim, reclaiming the ancient Sith worlds of Xyost and Yavin 4, and they launched countless raids into Republic space, causing chaos wherever they could. Then, in 1750 BBY, they finally united under a sole Dark Lord again. This new Dark Lord was the Dark Underlord, an ancient dark side spirit brought out of chaos to lead the armies of Sith into battle. This vengeful wraith amassed a legion of fanatical darksiders known as the Black Knights, who took over the new Sith and led a bloody campaign against the Republic, terrorizing Knights, the Zona huh? Mickey hyperspace route from their base on Malrev 4. Fortunately for the galaxy though, the reign their armor of the design looks amazing. didn't last long. The Jedi Master Murtagh led a dedicated team of Jedi Knights in a counter-offensive against the Black Knights, and he successfully recruited the Mandalorians to join the fight against the Sith. Oh! In the Battle of Melrev 4, Mandalorians, Mandalorians were Jedi, crushed huh? the Dark Underlord's armies, while Murtagh himself banished the Dark Spirit back to chaos. The pressures of the battle turned Murtagh to the dark side, however, and he defected to the new Sith soon afterwards. The war would continue, and the Dark Underlord's defeat was little more than a hiccup in the Sith's endless campaign. In the following centuries, the Sith spread all across the Rim and began pushing inwards from all sides, slowly strangling the Republic. But by around 1500 BBY, 500 years into the new Sith Wars, their offensives slowly began to stagnate. The Republic, with the help of the Jedi, won major victories against the Sith at Corfelion, Gap 9, and King's Galquek, and it seemed like the tides were slowly turning. But then, hey, that's what I use as my background. Apart. The new oh, Sith managed the to old recruit Republic the Devaronians and Hishians as allies, and as those species began their own wars with the Republic, the Sith began massing troops at Mizra in the Inner Rim. In 1466 BBY, the Jedi and the Republic attacked this Sith mustering ground, sparking one of the largest battles of the new Sith Wars. Dozens of Sith Lords participated in this battle, riding into the fray on customized speeder bikes named after predatory beasts they believed symbolized their innermost nature. At first, the battle went well for the Jedi and their followers, as their army was guided by a Jedi coordinator using battle meditation. But at the height of the battle, oh, she also the coordinator was killed by a Sith sniper, and the Sith took full advantage of the it's resultant kind of like confusion, utterly massacring the Jedi in one of the biggest routes in galactic history. More than 500,000 Republic soldiers and Jedi were killed, and hundreds of Jedi were captured, tortured, and turned to the dark side. The Battle of Mizra was a huge victory for the Sith. It cost the Republic control of the entire Outer Rim and much of the Mid Rim and Expansion region wow, fell that's a under lot. Sith control. The Battle of Mizra might have resulted in the total destruction of the Republic if the new Sith were not held back by infighting over the title of Dark Lord yet again. Despite this, the Sith consolidated their power throughout the late 1400s BBY, and sometime after 1417 BBY, they united under a single leader once again, Darth Riven, an extremely powerful Sith Lord who made it his mission to find a way to save the Sith from themselves. Wait, Darth, Darth Riven? Riven spent most of his reign holed up or in a fortress this... on Almas, ruling the Darth new Riven? Sith through his apprentices while he worked on his pet project, the Sith Battle Lords. These were his solution hmm. to the Sith's plague of infighting, a class of warriors who were mindlessly loyal to the Sith Lords and who were bonded to their soldiers through the Force. Through an arcane Sith ritual that involved cutting open prospective Battle Lords and having their troops march through the pools of their blood, a Battle Lord's troops were bound to their commander, and any injury they attempted to inflict on their superiors would instead be inflicted on themselves. 
Riven's Battle Lords dramatically wow. improved battlefield performance of the Sith armies, and for a while, this paid off. The Sith won victory after victory, and the Republic was driven to the brink. But the Battle Lords couldn't fix the new Sith's true problem, the Sith ideology itself, which demanded infighting and competition. Ultimately, Riven was slain by his own apprentice, and the Sith were forced to stop using Battle Lords once the Jedi started targeting them to free their bonded soldiers, who usually had no loyalty to the Sith after being forced into these rituals. Despite the death of Darth Riven, things continued to get worse. After the Battle of Misra, the Republic began a slow implosion, hemorrhaging territory as civilization itself began to fragment. Plague swept across Republic space and whole swathes of the galaxy lost holonet access and trade relations with Republic worlds, cutting them off wow. from everyone else. In 1400 BBY, the Senate gave the Supreme Chancery to a Jedi Master, and for the next 400 years, the position would be exclusively held by Jedi who were basically the only ones propping up the Republic at this point. Some Jedi okay, took command sense. of the sectors the Republic had left behind, becoming Jedi Lords and establishing their own personal militaries to fend off pirates and Sith. After wow, Darth Revan, didn't... the next <laughs> Dark Lord of the Sith was a Shido shapeshifter named Belia Dazu. She rose to power sometime before 1250 BBY, and in her secret fortress on Tython, she created a plague worse than anything that had struck the Republic so far. Dazu's creation was the Nanogene Spore, a product of Sith alchemy, an insidious technovirus that caused those who came into contact with it to grow mechanical tumors which steadily cannibalized their hosts, turning their flesh oh. into metal and lobotomizing them. The victim of Dazu's plague became zombie-like monsters of twisted metal, techno-beasts loyal only to Dazu herself. She assembled an army of techno-beasts called the Metanecrons and led them into battle against the Republic and the Jedi in the 20 years Sissets Wars, which lasted from 1250 BBY to 1230 BBY. Dazu terrorized the galaxy with her Techno Beast Plague, which even Jedi were vulnerable to. She was only defeated when the Mercrosa Order, who were ostensibly allies of the new Sith, got upset at the Meadow Necrons encroaching on their territory and assassinated Dazu. But her followers fought on, and the Sictus Wars ended in a victory for the new Sith, though the threat of the Techno Beast Plague was eliminated. The new Sith, though leaderless once more, capitalized on their victory in the Sictus Wars, pushing ever deeper into Republic space. By 1100 BBY, the Republic was all but completely crushed, and Coruscant itself was at the mercy of the Sith. But in their moment of triumph, the Sith destroyed themselves once again, as the Sith Lords squabbled over Typical. who would become Dark Lord of the Sith once Coruscant had fallen. This time, the result was an all-out Sith oh, that's a cool war, design. which annihilated the new Sith Empire and greatly diminished the strength of the Sith. But the Republic was unable to capitalize on the Sith Civil War. It was a shadow of its former self at this point, with only the core, the colonies, and pockets along the major hyperspace routes remaining in its control. Most of the galaxy was thrown into total anarchy, with neither the Republic nor the Sith strong enough to lay claim to them. This lasted for nearly a hundred years, a century known as the Republic Dark Age. And That's this a cool time, design too. the only hope wow. for the galaxy was the Jedi Lords, who kept the squabbling Sith Warlords away from their protectorates. For decades, the Sith hey, barely paid Paris. any attention to the Republic, instead carving out kingdoms in the sectors the Republic had left behind. These kingdoms regularly fractured into rump states led by competing Sith Lords. Notably, this happened in the Grumani Sector, where the absolute lunatics Diamond and Odeon divided their mother's Sith Kingdom between them fighting an endless war with each other while the people of the sector suffered. Occasionally, rogue Jedi Knights like Kara Holt would intervene in these troubled sectors, but the Jedi and the Republic typically lacked the resources to liberate them outright. And so, after over 900 years of fighting, the New Sith Wars reached an impasse, with the Republic, the Jedi, and the New Sith all weak and incapable of ruling the galaxy. The New Sith had the opportunity every Order of Sith before them had dreamed of but the individualistic and hyper-competitive nature of the dark side was holding them back, turning them against each other. It would take the vision of a new Dark Lord of the Sith to reunite them, heralding in the final chapter of the new Sith Wars, 
a 10 year conflict that would decide the fates of the galaxy. But that's the story for next time. As always, that was a great video and learned a lot. So one thing I really took away from this video was uh, the one, uh, that at one point the Republic uh, had a Jedi who was the Supreme Chancellor at the time. And on top of that, there was Jedi Lords who controlled like individual sectors and had their like uh, basically kind of like what the Sith did. Like when the Sith had like their own Sith kingdoms. But when I first heard that, I kind of thought that they were going to be like tempted. Like at least one Jedi was going to be tempted into like breaking off and just like joining the dark side and doing their own thing and creating their own uh, kingdom or empire. That's like wh what I took away from that. But anyways, that was crazy. And I didn't know that there was another uh, Jedi that had a battle meditation just like Bastila Shan. And on top of that, basically uh, from what I uh, keep on seeing, like, and it was mentioned at the end of the video just now, like how the infighting and all that just keeps on turn, uh, preventing the Sith from like going, uh, go, like achieving their like true potential. But either way, uh, I say like that kind of kind of like what balances it out, like how the Republic uh, keeps on losing, but the Sith uh, are winning. But the thing is, uh, they keep on being held back by like personal. Uh, reasons and individualism so but i'm really excited to see like what the next video has in store because each video is phenomenal it, it like addresses their own situations like an individual or like a a war or just like an event so that's really amazing to see so anyways thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and i because i really enjoyed watching uh, this episode of sith history and again keep an eye out for more content and also check out my other videos out of my channel and again thank you guys so much for your support in this channel i really do appreciate it and i hope you guys are having an amazing day or night wherever you guys are and i'll see you guys next time